Honda all of the time. So it'll be pretty easy, I know, he and I and our vision. And I think it's time to take a progressive look at comprehensive. You know, bipartisanship has its merits. You know, bipartisanship has its merits. It has its value. It has its place. But I think at this point, we need a progressive, comprehensive immigration bill that tells this debate that we're having what it is we want, what it is we require, what fairness is. but we have to figure out the language so that we can take a DREAM Act bill that makes sure that those kids immediately get the kind of financial aid that they need and we don't have to wait. <laughs> Let's do a DREAM Act that says, you know, you really, if you don't want to join the military, you don't have to join the military. It says, that gives the same right that every American citizen has when they make the decision about going to school and making a priority of their life. So, I mean, I want to make sure we have a progressive bill that reunites families. But you know, if you've been waiting 20 years in the Philippines, then you should wait 20 seconds after we pass that bill before your family members get their visas to come here to this country immediately. Yeah. that says that immediate family members will be reunited and we're going to have target dates. So let's, let's write it, but let's write it together. And let's make sure, we understand enforcement, it's important, but let's make it humane enforcement. Let's make it the kind of enforcement that's smart and doesn't discriminate and doesn't target and finger point against our immigrant community. We can do that. And because I'm going to tell you one thing. I think we're going to write a comprehensive book that says very clearly, si tu eres un criminal, if you're a criminal and you pray in our community and you sell drugs and you join a gang and you do harm, we will not stand up and we will not raise our voices for you. But we are ready to raise the voice for all of those that work hard, sweat and toil and follow all of the rules. bill doesn't have to be one that isn't strong and doesn't keep our community safer from those who will prey upon us. Because we are the first, and most of the time, the only victim of those people who prey on our community. So let's be very clear about where we're at. So I'm ready to work with you and in the next few weeks, because I know some of us are getting together on October 13th. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? We can have all our principles ready. My content and I can figure out if we're working together and if we're going to stand together. We can get members of the Black Caucus together. We have many friends in the Black Caucus. Many friends in the Black Caucus. You know, I spoke to Charlie Randall the other day and I said, I said, I can say this, you know, because we're colleagues. So I said, Charlie, what about, he said, I want to build it. We don't have to apologize anymore. <laughs> I want a bill that says in America, people can say, I forgive you. It's okay. We understand you made a mistake. I want a bill that says, let's move on. Is that the kind of bill you're going to introduce? I said, well, if I can work with my friends on a comprehensive immigration bill that's progressive, that's the kind of bill that I want. He says, then I will be there and stand with you. So let's the last time gave me, you know, when I introduced Driver, Senator Kennedy, we introduced it together in a bicameral, bipartisan, <coughs> and it was a good movement forward. But there's not going to be any touchback in a bill that the progressives introduced in the Congress of the United States. This is going to be a bill that says you fill out your paperwork here, you pay whatever fines you're going to pay here, you stay here, and there's not going to be any reporting for deportation under our bill or any fear because we understand that a progressive bill understands fundamentally one thing, that if we're going to be successful, then people are going to have to believe that it's real. Because look, millions of people aren't simply going to wake up one day and say, oh, mira, Luego tiene pasó esa propuesta, pues vente, vamos a ir a la oficina a llenar los papeles. 
Then you wake up one day and say, oh, let me go fill out the papers. Luis's proposal got passed. There's a lot of fear in our community. So people have to, have to feel, have to understand, have to grasp, right? Have to believe, have to embrace the result of the legislative body and say, that's something that I can believe in. That's something that I'm ready to go sign up for. That's something, because if there isn't cooperation and volunteer cooperation, where the people come forward, the undocumented come forward, it's not gonna work. It's not going to work if they don't believe, if they believe that this is just another. And you know what? They have good reason. They have good reason. Look at this. We have a progressive president of the United States, but deportations are up. Yeah. We have a progressive president of the United States, but more families are being united, divided than ever before. We have a progressive president of the United States, but 287G was reauthorized. Yeah. And Sheriff Alpayo is still out there discriminating and his hatred instead of being taken out of the program. <laughs> we have progressive, we have Democrats, and we're talking about, oh, you know what, even on health care. Oh, make sure. I mean, <clears throat> come on. They hear it, they go. Mira, the president said that uh, illegals, he don't, you know, at least Bush called them undocumented. You gotta give Bush credit. <laughs> no. no, we're going backwards. We went from them being called undocumented under the Bush administration, right? Where all his secretaries and all, that's true. Where all they call them undocumented, you're like, <laughs> They're learning the language. Because that means they understand, right? Because language is important. And how you define people is important. And they go, oh, they're calling us illegal again. That's what the, no. I don't really need to criticize my own, but just to give you a sense. So I tell you all of this, I think you're right to raise the question. Because it's heading in the wrong direction. The debate is heading in the wrong direction. It's heading such in the wrong direction that even under health care reform, where there are going to be private companies competing Private companies with no taxpayer funding, with not a cent, even when you go to that mall, right, that exchange, you got to prove you're an American. Where are we going? Is it next year before you get gas or you get your electricity bill hooked up? You got to prove you're a citizen? No, think about it. It's a slippery slope. First it was about government and taxpayer sponsored stuff. But now it's going to be even worse. So I think it's a great time to do it. But I want to do it with you. So my response is yes, Juan. Yes, I want to do it. In the end, if our bill does not unite and bring together people, then I think we've lost a very important fundamental objective. A bill for a bill's sake, we all know we could write that. It has to be a bill that brings all the progressive forces together, that has good family reunification, that keeps our students together, that keeps families together. We said it early on. And let's remember that's a bill that organizes the base. If it, if it criminalizes them, if it says they got to show up and somehow plead guilty for working, for contributing, then we're going to have the same response that you had the sense of right. And I think that's what we've learned fundamentally. We have to be who we are. We have to represent who we are. And who we represent and who we are are the best and the most progressive and the brightest and the most caring and humane comprehensive immigration bill and stand for that as we debate and negotiate. that brings people in LA together, that brings people in New York, that brings Asians and Africans together, huh? that brings Latinos of all different stripes together, that brings us all together, that brings the AFL, Seattle, we can't let them go. We can't say to our brothers and neighbors, oh, we ain't listening. We do a progressive bill where we sit down with SEIU, where we sit down with Unite Here, where we sit down with the United Food and Commercial Workers Union, where we sit down with the AFL-CIO and we say, we're working together. We gotta keep all of our members of our army, right? 
Porque es un ejército que vamos a crear. The bill is, right? A, 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 a role, right? The bill allows us to create the army that will allow us to be successful for people in the end. If that's what you want to engage in, I'm ready to engage with you. But it will be a different bill. It will be a unique bill. But it will be the kind of caring and compassionate bill we can all be very, very proud of. Thank you very much.
here today um, as one of your MCs. I'd also like to introduce the Reverend Conrad Brayton, pastor of the Church of Reformation, who is welcoming us here today. Thank you, Reverend. Well, welcome. And uh, I, I just couldn't help but be thinking of, uh, of what it must have sounded like with all these drums and horns going around the walls of Jericho that we learn in Bible school. Uh, and the walls came tumbling down. And I thought just how fitting it was as you uh, gather to be addressing the walls of immigration that are unjust and separate us from being a more just society, that, uh, that maybe some of the walls will come down just out of the, out of the noise. Amen. Uh, welcome to the Sanctuary of Church of the Reformation. Uh, this congregation is celebrating this year its 140th anniversary on, in this little on Capitol Hill. Uh, we talked about witnessing the light of Christ to the community uh, throughout our life. A lot of that light that hopefully we have witnessed has been to be a place of hospitality for issues and groups of justice in our country, beginning especially uh, in the time of civil rights and uh, the Southern Christian Leadership uh, uh, Conference met here and worshiped here. Uh, causing a lot of consternation to many people in the congregation, but we did so because it was the right thing to do. And today it is the right thing to do to uh, welcome you with our open arms and hospitality and glad we could be here as backup to, uh, to what might have been a rainy day. And uh, as you gather in unity of movement from across the country, May you find in this sanctuary a good place to be meeting, joining your hearts and your passion and your commitment to be doing justice on behalf of your brothers and sisters uh, with the immigration laws of our country. So welcome. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, friends. My name is Unsuk Lee, and I'm with the NACASAP, which is the National Korean American Service and Education Consortium. Today we are gathered here to mark Citizenship Day by reaffirming the central meaning of citizenship, of shared responsibility and shared sacrifice, and by enabling ordinary people, leaders in our community who best exemplify citizenship to share their stories. We are the ones who marched, who voted, and who are here in D.C. today. Some of us traveled four hours and some of us traveled 40 hours to come here heeding the long overdue call for realizing change in this country we call home. We believe it can happen, and we also know it is desperately needed. Our nation is in crisis, and it is up to us to reinvigorate the movement with reason and hope. This is what unity and movement is about. It is about diverse communities coming together to support each other so that we can all lead long, prosperous, and dignified lives. This is a shared vision that brings us together and which we hold ourselves, Congress, and the White House too. To start this program, we invite Deepak Bhargava from the Center for Community Change to reflect and speak to the meaning of citizenship, community values, and the sense of the moment. Thank you, Lin and Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Unity in Movement is a beautiful and a joyous sight. We are gathered here together as diverse community members from all parts of the country, joined in common purpose to celebrate Citizenship Day and reflect on the meaning of citizenship at this crucial moment in our country's history, when not just public policy, but the values and character of our nation are at stake. I know that many of you, like me, have been shocked and sad by the anger, the name-calling, the racism, and the hate that we have seen over the last few weeks and months at town hall meetings, in the media, and even from our elected officials in Congress. We should remember that the hate that we are seeing 
in the national debate is nothing new. American history at its core is a struggle between two visions of citizenship. One that would restrict citizenship to a few, those with enough property, white people, men, the native born, and one, an alternative, that would seek to expand citizenship to everybody. Many of us would not even be here today were it not for people like Frederick Douglass, who fought to abolish slavery, and Susan B. Anthony, who marched to give women the vote, and in so doing, to make our democracy more real. Those incredible people and millions of everyday Americans faced opposition and hatred and violence that was even more intense than what we face today. We are the ones who carry the torch for those values of inclusion and democracy for this generation of Americans. It is the highest of all calls that we have answered, and nobody said that it would be easy. We must take heart in the fact that though there are very difficult moments in our journey, as Martin Luther King famously said, the arc of history is long, but it bends towards justice. For those of us who are gathered here today, citizenship is not just a piece of paper. It is about the contributions that we make in our communities every day to make the lives of our neighbors and our families better. It is about community values of caring and inclusion. It is about our character. And as I look around today, I see leaders who embody these values that define citizenship. Don Ramirez, who is a sheep shearer, lives in senior housing, registered over 100 people to vote in 2008. But just as importantly, the people in his community know that they can drop their bicycles at his house when they're broken because he will rebuild them for the children in the neighborhood. To Thomas Wong, a graduate student in political science who is a member of Vietnamese American Young Leaders Association, volunteers in the community in Louisiana to help rebuild after Hurricane Katrina. Charles Yoon, who immigrated to the United States from Korea in 1975, joined the United States Army and served in the military for 20 years. He has helped many immigrants navigate the immigration system, get health care for their children, and help them become economically secure. These are only a few stories of the hundreds that I could have chosen to read today. We are Korean and white and Latino and African American and Native American. We are immigrants and native born. We are women and men from the North and the South, the East and the West. We are Republicans as well as Democrats. What unites us is a common idea of what it means to be a citizen. The remarkable people here today hold in their hearts and express in their actions every day okay, a generous idea. vision of what citizenship means. Citizenship to us is about what it means to care for one another. It means living with the deep knowledge that our fates are linked, that we cannot succeed or find happiness or fulfillment while our neighbors are suffering. We acknowledge that we rise or fall together as one people. This community-based vision of citizenship, which has been elevated by President Obama again and again, is once again under attack. Some are bringing guns to town hall meetings to intimidate others. Others engage in hate speech that targets members of our community and incites violence. Many are fanning flames of hate and undermining the civility and respect that are so essential to a democratic society. What is underneath this anger and this hate? It's a vision of a society in which we are all on our own and we have to fight to protect what little we have because there isn't enough to go around. It's a vision that says that our neighbor is not only not our responsibility, but she is our enemy. It's a vision grounded in fear, isolation, and yes, grounded in racism. Brothers and sisters, this is, once again, a time for choosing in America. Not just choosing between one health care plan and another, but also choosing what kind of country we want to be. Which vision of citizenship do we embrace? A vision that excludes or a vision that includes? A 
vision that says that we are all on our own in a constant state of war and competition with one another, or one that tries to build a beloved community in which each of us has a place of respect and dignity. This is a time for choosing in America. We are at a crossroads as a nation, and today we are here to choose the path of justice, community, and love. Thank you very much. So that one's fine, right? Yeah. So it was really confusing to me. Those are like, they, they said that they're valued at like 100 something. That's what we did. Can I ask you, okay, so is it me then? Should I just not? Because my thing is like, I saw something for um, one lunch at $100. You can pay $100 for lunch. So we can, I know, I, but I, think we should I don't know how to price that one. I don't want to offend your pawn. Like, if we don't. not there. No. <laughs> you're not going to say how much do people get from you. Well, that's fun this year. And they're like, lunch for you was well, going for $30. And you can say, not have stolen from Korea, wired in $4,000. And then, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, okay. But that's what you're worried about, what you That's want. why, uh, the, that's why that one's $100. Nikki, you have some, just use it. Can you, let's go through some people. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know so if you can support. I agree with, I agree with Margaret Cho, okay? okay? I get it. She's a big star. This is, that she, one's cut. So let's not yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. So we don't have to put original value anymore? You should, but we're just agreeing because this, you cannot 